So my name is Greg Monarosa, and thank you everyone for coming. And today I'll be talking about how I mentored 100 startups this summer. So what is an entrepreneur? So some would describe it as an adventurer. Uh, Jean-Baptiste Say, who's a French economist, he popularized the term entrepreneur in the 1800s. He says, an entrepreneur shifts economic resources out of one area of lower and into an area of higher productivity and greater yield. Simply put, entrepreneurs seek opportunities for profit and by doing so create new markets. So my background. Um, eight years ago, I launched a company here in Westlake Village that helps people set up corporations and LLCs. And three years ago, the company outgrew me, so I stepped aside, hired a CEO, and now live on dividends. I'm also a Startup Weekend organizer, and now I am a global mentor of theirs. Um, and I also have two successful exits under my belt. So my journey. My journey started with a local company called Clutter. Um, they came by our house, picked it all up, stored it somewhere, where I don't know, but it, hopefully it's stored somewhere safe, and a one-way ticket. So why Paris? Um, PricewaterhouseCooper is one of the largest auditing firms in the world, and they rank Paris as uh, number one as far as intellectual capital and innovation. Paris is also second in global student destinations, and it's ranked third in research and development centers. And more importantly, Paris inspires. So entrepreneur mecca. Um, the government puts its money where its mouth is. Um, recently, they created a quarter of a million dollar fund to help fund accelerators and startup spaces like this throughout the entire country. As far as size goes, as you can see, um, Los Angeles alone is a large larger city, but uh, it's about the size of the Conejo Valley. So, so French tech. Um, the first quarter of 2015, investments were up 70% for startups. 250 startups pulled in 750 million euros in the first quarter of this year alone, which is really impressive for a small city. So what is Startup Weekend? Some of you may have seen this video already, some of you haven't, but we're gonna watch it anyway.
why I got the chills. So, <laughs> so after organizing Startup Weekend here in this space, the first weekend in May, um, my fiance and I embarked on this journey to Paris. So the following weekend, after having organized Startup Weekend here in this space, I was a mentor at Startup Weekend Paris. So we got to Paris on Wednesday, and Friday it was back to work for me. Um, the venue was a co-working space called Be Co-working, um, located in the heart of Paris. Really cool space, multi-level. We had 80 participants, um, 30 Raspberry Pi developer kits, 20 startups were formed with eight mentors, six 3D printers, and three organizers. I was impressed with the tools and resources the organizing team came together with. The 3D printers were hard at work all weekend. At one point during the, our downtime, we 3D printed a 3D printer, which was pretty cool. <laughs> Some of the teams that came out of Startup Weekend Paris, um, one of my favorite were Mogo. So what these guys did is they built a box that sits on the back of your scooter, um, your moped, and it turns your moped into a showroom. And um, their market were just markets where retailers didn't have access to. So it was nice to be around the kind of environment with a maker's team. Um, this is a, one, another one of my favorite teams. So this team, they worked on, on a scarf um, that had a kit within it. So it gave you, when the pollution was too high, you got a notification on your phone that lets you know you might want to go inside. So it was really cool to see that go from an idea to an actual product come Sunday. And my most favorite were these guys, Body Energy. So they worked on this contraption that goes around your chest. And every time you inhale and exhale, energy would be produced and stored in this little battery pack you carried on your back. And it was really cool. And their markets were just places where they had no access to electricity, but a lot of cell phones. So apparently there's some developing countries where they have a huge number of phones, but don't have enough electricity to charge them. And this was a Sunday at, Saturday at 3 a.m., and I was the DJ. <laughs> so that was cool. So what's Paris without food? Um, I had a chance to have my first foie gras experience. The teams there were really awesome, and the food was even better. So diving into an event where I didn't understand the language, I mean, I show up on Friday night where it's pitch night, and these people are pitching their companies in French, and I have no idea what they're saying. And now that the teams are formed, I'm supposed to go help these guys with whatever problems they may be facing was somewhat of a challenge that I quickly had to overcome. So what's the startup scene like in Paris? Oh, Paris is awesome. So in Paris, um, a French entrepreneur and one of the most active angel investors in the world with a net worth of around $10 billion, Xavier Neal, created 42 School last year, and where they train, so far they've trained 1,000 programmers for free. Um, there's no formal classes. Instead, students who are accepted are assigned projects and teach each other with some guidance from staff. And here's a video on what they're up to in Paris. Charlotte taps in a code to enter school. She's taking part in the first days of an institution without classes, without a set timetable, and without teachers. In Paris, School 42 was founded by Javier Neal, the founder of Free. He set it up to break established codes. Charlotte has no diploma, was chosen from 70,000 applicants. On the internet, you have access to new topics. Generally, we have a week to 15 days to finish a project. We're given a video and an outline explanation of what needs to be done to complete the work. Deputy General Manager of the school, and like his father, he discovered a mismatch between the demands of the 
fans of companies and current computer training in France. The values which we are getting across here are fundamentally different to those which are normally taught. That's all. Today you have values that are taught to young people who face the prospect of working individually. And it's really the opposite of what you need in the digital world. Teachers, or rather educational supervisors, are discreet. The aim is to encourage students to find the solution by themselves before coming to see them. They even work out among themselves how they should be assessed. 29-year-old Maxi, who worked as a web developer, came here to gain a greater command of the skills needed for a program. The students correct the work themselves. We have an internet that allows us to know what needs to be corrected, who is who, and when it's time to make those corrections in general, we can see that. Even if they've tackled the same problem, they rarely come up with the same solution. That's what creates the exchange between us. It's actually what creates the evolution. Today, if you want to start with virtual work, you need people who will work differently. Yet in our current system, which is based on the class, where if you're born in the right place, you go to the right school. And so by definition, at the end, you get people who, in quotation marks, all innovate in the same way. School 42 is a private school entirely free for people between 18 and 30, whether they have exam qualifications or not. Why 42? We'll have a look at the cover of the book, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So this was a really cool space to visit. I mean, from the moment I walked in, everybody had something to do. Um, but one thing they all had in common was everyone was smiling and really happy. So to be surrounded by people that are there to learn and facilitators that are there to help and see the amount of smiles throughout the room, it was just a really neat experience. Which brings me to one of my favorite spaces, um, NUMA in Paris. Um, in 2008, it was born as the first co-working space in France and it later became the first accelerator in France. Um, the space is 16,000 square feet, six stories high, with each floor housing startups based on the stage that they're in. So the first floor was really cool. It's a nomad zone. So it's a free co-working space where anybody can come work on whatever projects they're up to. There's a really cool cafe downstairs. And the second floor houses their NUMA Sprint program, which is an accelerator for ideas. Each season houses 22 teams, and they're currently on their sixth season. The third floor is a really cool space. Um, what goes on there is, so not every startup goes on to make it. So what they do is they pretty much house what's left over from the previous seasons, and big corporations pay to bring ideas there to get prototyped or worked on. And it's actually become a really cool profit model for the center. So they're working with um, some big telecommunication companies to help develop applications or systems that they just couldn't in-house. So they bring them to a space like this where a bunch, bunch of entrepreneurs are housed to work on products for them. And it's a really cool model. Um, here's a video on the space itself.
so this space is where most of my mentoring took place. Um, my poor wife, there were moments where she'd have to go explore by herself because I had a mentorship session with somebody at NUMA. But it, that space just gave that kind of energy where people of all ages were just getting it done. And it felt really good to be around that environment where every day you saw the progress of this product or this business. So it will forever live in my heart. Um, so NUMA is the kind of place where you walk in with a business opportunity and you walk out with a business or product. And again, it's where most of my mentoring took place. I mentored over 30 startups while I was there and provided really solid feedback and contacts for a lot of problems they were facing. Um, what I realized is that I was able to use my network to help people. So in a lot of cases, I wasn't able to find a solution for them, but I probably know somebody that can help you with that. So that's where I found that my network was really my net worth in this space. So then we move on to 50 Partners. So 50 Partners was a really cool space um, founded by 50 um, tech and venture capitalist people to help incubate and accelerate businesses in Paris. And they start you off with 50 to 100,000 euros in funding, mentors, services, and a space. The building, this picture does no justice, is in an old courthouse. So you walk in and there's like order and law going on in there. <laughs> but it's a really cool space in Paris. So the following weekend, after Startup Weekend Paris, um, I've got to go to Bordeaux because they have Startup Weekend going on in Bordeaux. And their three verticals for the weekend were food, wine, and tourism. The event took place at a university called Kedge, and this is a private university that a group of businessmen came together and created. So it's a really good business school in France. They have one in Mars. They have three campuses now throughout France. So in Bordeaux, we had 60 participants, 11 startups, and eight mentors. The organizers were all college students that went to the school, so the energy was just high levels throughout the entire weekend. We had like a 4 a.m. pickup basketball game on one of the nights, which beat me up. And then they had two um, global mentors. So myself and a good friend now, Keith. Um, Keith barely spoke any English and spoke absolutely no French, but was a pleasure to be around and was very helpful. So some of my favorite startups there were um, the Cafe of Happiness. It was a collaborative cafe where if I enjoy cooking, I can come in, cook food, and it'll entitle me to credits to eat there for free. And their model was pretty on point. They had teams like Kick Me Out, an app that encourages you to get out the house and explore, which was really neat. Tasty Around, which help you find local home-cooked meals. How I Mate connected you with travelers who shared common interests with you. So a lot of people travel alone. So this eliminated that and just connected you with people that shared the same interests. And um, they had really solid feedback and an actual client base. By the time the weekend was over, people were paying to be a part of their platform. And then my favorite was the wine game. I mean, it was awesome. They had a case of wine in one of the classrooms, and what they did is they turned um, wine tasting into a game. Um, so professionals, they rank wine a certain way, and there was a professional guy on their team who ranked wines for a living, so decided to bring that to people's living rooms. And so it was fun. Um, my head hurt a bit, but it, it was a cool team to hang out with. So the teams in Bordeaux had great use of video. They shared the stage with one another. They all had functional prototypes, and they all had a contagious energy when the weekend was done. You can really tell this was, this was a hardworking startup community that knows how to have fun. So what I learned as an entrepreneur that weekend is that we all share the same desires to change and improve the world. And more importantly, as mentors, our responsibility is to inspire and motivate action. Oh, Bordeaux. So at Bordeaux, the startup scene there is led by a group um, 
that go by the name of 33 entrepreneurs. 33 is the country code in France, and their motto is play to your strengths. It's funded by entrepreneurs from Bordeaux, and it's an accelerator that focuses on gastronomy, wine, and tourism. At their office, I had a chance to mentor 15 startups there that were all on their way to do some really cool things. And here's a short video on what they're up to. Entrepreneurship is born of passion. And Europe, and particularly France, is full of many, many irrational, passionate people. Extrêmement excitant d'être au début d'une aventure. Pour entreprendre de façon générale, on est obligé d'être passionné. Les entrepreneurs ont fait le choix de changer le monde au travers de leur entreprise. Et c'est fondamental pour moi. C'est vraiment important pour moi que ça The rooster is like, like a French symbol. It's a big deal there. <laughs> Bordeaux was one of my favorite towns. It reminded me a lot of this town where we live in, as far as it being affluent and having a sense of a strong community. So I made the comment there that when I'm old and senile, just ship me to Bordeaux. I'll be fine there. So these guys at 33 Entrepreneurs are so passionate about startups that they launched a nine-city tour here in the U.S. looking for startups to give $100,000 to. So their tour took them from New York to Los Angeles with our very own Mike Panessis serving as a judge here in Los Angeles. And um, one of our locals here pitched his company that, at that event as well. So then two weeks after Bordeaux, I get a call and they want me to come mentor at Lyon because they've heard that there's this guy from LA who's like on a startup weekend kick in France. <laughs> Why not, right? So Friday, May 19th, I find myself on a five hour bus ride to Bordeaux, to Lyon. So this weekend we had 45 participants with nine teams and five mentors. The event was held at a local university in Lyon um, with startup enthusiasts from all walks of life. I ran into a lot of people that worked for big companies there, but just wanted to get a sense of that startup community. So they participated in this event. One of the things I wanted to do different this weekend was actually go out with the teams to validate their products. So it's one thing as a mentor to say, here's what you should do. And it's another thing as a mentor to say, come on, let's go do it. So in Lyon, the energy was a lot different than Paris and Bordeaux. It wasn't as daring as the companies in Paris, or it wasn't as exciting as the companies in Bordeaux, but they still were into the get shit done mentality. The verticals for this weekend were food. So every startup had to do something involving food. So it ranged anywhere from food truck finder applications to barbecued crickets <laughs> and meal delivery services. And I was fortunate enough to make it onto a slide. <laughs> so during World War II, Lyon was a center of the French resistance. 
Economically, the city contains a significant software industry and in recent years has fostered a growing local startup sector. I got a chance to meet with an accelerator there who, again, are coming into the problem where we can't find enough startups to accelerate. So I'm like, sit tight, I'll be back. There's money in France. So then I had to make an immigration trip to London. So I had outstayed my welcome in France and it's time to go to London to get my passport stamped to come on back. So what do I do? We beeline it to Google London. This is a really cool space. So the first floor is a free co-working space where you just have to pre-register on their website and you can come co-work for free. Um, they have mobile app testing centers, which are really cool. You come in, plug your device, and you can tweak your app and know that a Google representative is right upstairs. Here's a short video on what their center's up to in London. So the difference between London and France is that in London you have a lot of billion dollar valuations. So the attitude is you launch your startup in, Paris, in France and then you go seek that capital in London and then you make your way to the US if you have to. But for the most part European countries look at Africa, Asia and Europe for their revenue. Um, they feel like it's it'll be too expensive to compete here in the US and they understand that there's money everywhere so they just decide to stick in Europe. I had the opportunity to go hang out at Techstars London and there my buddy Sammy put me straight to work and had me mentor 15 other startups there which um, it was really nice to be in their space and see how an accelerator that I look up to operates in a different country. 
What's even cooler is there was Burning Man art throughout the wall too. So it, I don't know, it gave me a sense of home. So go Techstars London. So in France, they're into American innovation so much that they're willing to pay entrepreneurs that are not French to come launch their product or idea in France. Um, with a six to 12 month visa, 12,500 euros for each founder of your team, mentorship, and a space to work with no loss of equity. And it's a really cool thing for a government to put money into. So this year they took 500 applications. From those 500, they accept 50 startups, and their teams are off and running to go launch their startup in France, which was really cool to see. So my takeaway is um, we need to start thinking global as business owners. Um, we have a sense of, well, it's a regional company or I just want to conquer the US. No, let's do what they do and start looking at the world as our playground. What they look, for, uh, what they look in us is inspiration. So they see the Ubers and the Airbnbs coming into their countries and just dominating certain industries and they want to do the same thing. So it's up to us to continuously be innovative and encourage people that we can get things done. We also live in a resource-rich society where many of us don't take advantages of the opportunities that are at our disposal. A lot of these companies in Europe have the dream of we should go work in the US and we're here. So like they come here to feel successful and we're here. So let's take advantage of that and utilize the resources that are at disposal, whether on a local level, on a county level, on a nationwide level, we need to take advantage of that because people will come here and take advantage of that on our behalf if we don't. So I wanna give thank you to my partner who's here, Melody, for encouraging me to take this trip, which I would never have without her inspiration and support. And that concludes my time spent in Paris and Europe exploring their ecosystem. Yes? Sure. <laughs>